Okay, everyone, let's get started. It looks like we are streaming. We're on WebEx. And those, I know, right? Crazy. Um, it appears to be working. So um, let's get started. We just have a couple things to do. First of all, we'll start every meeting, at least until the deadline, for uh, on, on requests for bill introductions. Anyone have any bills they'd like to request from the committee? Seeing none in person or online, what about out there in the gallery or the corner where we've shoved you all? Nothing? Okay. Next, um, want to take up the rules. We sent those out last week. I don't know. Oh, no. Heck, this is still the first week. Um, sit them out at some point in time. It feels like it was decades ago. So you've had those. Um, any discussion on those? Representative Heiberger? Mr. Chair, in general, I think the rules are great. I just have a minor suggestion for change, uh, and really not because of anything that I expect to happen in this committee. Uh, but uh, Rule 23 regards adjournment. Uh, it says adjournment. I don't have a copy here. I believe it's at the discretion of the chair. Mason suggests that all committees should be adjourned upon motion or on unanimous consent. And I, again, I don't expect to have any difficulty with that here. But I think we've all seen instances where uh, the chair has unilaterally adjourned meetings in order to shut down discussion. So just for just for form's sake, I would suggest striking the current uh, 23 and replacing it with language uh, substantially similar to adjournment requires a motion to adjourn, a second, and the affirmative vote of a majority of the members present. Okay, I will take that as a an amendment to the rules. Is there a second? They're in person, a second by Representative O'Hobison. Um, I guess just to start off, my dis dis discussion would be that, um, as Representative Heiberger pointed out, I don't think, I hope this isn't a concern with me. Um, I, th I think we work well together in here, and and I've not needed to adjourn in a meeting, and I certainly don't anticipate doing so. Um, because we, again, we, we work well together, and we do good work, and, and I, I value everyone's opinions. Uh, any other thoughts on this? Mr. Chairman. Representative Carmichael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I respect and appreciate what my friend Representative Heiberger proposes, but I agree with the chair that that is unnecessary in this committee. Thank you. Representative Owens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just going to ask, um, the last two years in this committee, have we, we operated under the, the current existing proposed rules? We have. We, we have added 1920. 21 and 22, which are just in response to being able to have WebEx, WebEx live stream meetings. But the, the rest of the rules, including 23, is the same as it's been. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, thank you. Representative Samsel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have the utmost respect for the chairman. Uh, and actually all of my colleagues in Topeka, but one of my consistent themes, I've got a deep conviction that I think the more power we let accumulate at the top, uh, whether that means at uh, D.C., Speaker of the House or Senate President, same in Topeka and same uh, for our committee chairman, uh, I think the less the voices of the rest of us get heard. So I do believe majority rule uh, by and large is something that I'm going to try to stick with principle from start to finish. Uh, but that said, I'm in Wellsville, Kansas today, so I understand uh, that I probably am not allowed to vote. So I would otherwise support uh, the maker of the motion, but I think I will sit quietly um, on this particular one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion? Seeing none, let's vote on Representative Heiberger's proposed amendment to the rules. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say no. 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 Motion fails. Back on the rules. Any further discussion? If not, Representative Owens. Just a point of clarification. So um, having not seen the rules, we just heard Representative Carmichael vote um, via WebEx. Is that allowed in the committee? It, according to rule number 22, no member shall be, uh, shall be allowed to vote unless they are in the state house. So no, he will not be able to vote. Mr. Chairman, I am in the state house. I'm sitting in my office. I'm entitled to vote. Oh, you are. I think he was referring to Representative Samsel. Representative Samsel appears to be somewhere else. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, is there a motion to adopt the rules? Representative Hoheisel. Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt the rules. Is there a second? Second. Representative Carmichael. 
All in favor say aye. All opposed say aye. no. Rules are adopted. Thank you. We will now take up, I usually say get out House Bill 2048, but we don't have anything to get out, so pull it up on your, your computers. Um, I'm going to start with some amendments, and Natalie, yeah, there's Natalie on the screen. She's going to walk us through um, these. The first one, we're, we're calling a technical amendment, um, and I'll have Natalie explain why I believe it's technical, and she believes it might be more than technical, but it really doesn't change a whole lot. So, Natalie? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you guys hear me? We can. Okay, perfect. So um, I just emailed this um, balloon amendment to Kathy. She will um, email it to the distribution list here and work on getting it pulled up on the legislative's website. But in the meantime, I'm going to attempt to sh share my screen to show you guys what the balloon amendment is that um, we're going to be talking about. Let's see here. Okay. So this amendment um, proposes to make a change on page six, line seven, by striking September 15th, 2020. Um, if you read that um, sentence there, it says the state of disaster emergency described um, in that statute shall terminate on September 15th, 2020, as provided in um, KSA 48924B. In reality, the disaster declaration did not end up terminating because um, the provisions of KSA 48924B allow for extensions. And so while I don't think this date would have any legal effect, I think it is a little weird and you know maybe misleading to leave it in there like that. So this amendment would strike um, that date. So the sentence would just read, shall terminate as provided in KSA 2020 sub 48924B. Any questions for Natalie? If not, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, move this amendment second by Representative Hoheisel. Any discussion? If not, I will close and move my motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Say no. Motion carries. The next amendment that I have, Natalie, let's do the business closure language. Sorry about that. I had to write that down. <laughs> um, okay, let me get that to Kathy. Okay. That one should be coming your way, but let's... Uh... So this amendment um, proposes to make a change on page 12 um, with the wording of the business closure language. So um, the change, the way it would read um, if this amendment were adopted would be the governor may not order the closure or cessation of any business or commercial activity whether for profit or not for profit, and may not issue an order that prevents the movement or gathering of individuals. Um, her 15-day ability to close business, as well as the State Finance Council's ability to extend that 15 days, um, would remain um, stricken from the section. So I will move my motion. Is there a second? Representative Owens. Now I'll just briefly explain. Um, as I, sh I shared at the beginning of yesterday, the goal with House Bill 2016 is to, to the best we can, um, extend the status quo. And so the draft language that we used in the bill, that actually came out of some, some language that was suggested at the Kima Interim Committee meeting. And so yesterday, I think it was Representative, was it Heiberger or Samsel or both of them, asked if, if we were changing that language. And I referred back to a proclamation by the governor um, 
which the, the, the language was not exactly the same. And so last night, um, referred back to the proclamation, actually ran this by the governor's chief legal counsel and, and came up with this language, which again, I think continues forward with where we've been, been keeps the status quo in place. And as such, we, um, that's, that's why I have the, the amended language. So any discussion on this? Mr. Chairman. Representative Carmichael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the committee should know that were I the governor, I would not have agreed to this language and I would have taken a different tact. But fortunately, I am not the governor. And I have been in contact, and as the chair knows, we've worked with the governor's general counsel. I think the last of these amendments I saw sometime around one o'clock this morning. And I am informed by the governor's general counsel that this is acceptable to the governor. It is not what the governor might have wanted, uh, but I intend to support this balloon amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Heiberger. I essentially concur with the former representative. I, mean, I, I think the language is too broad. It doesn't give the governor enough flexibility to deal with a fast moving crisis. Uh, I don't believe that if the governor were a member of the majority party, we'd be looking at language like this. But uh, again, for the same reasons, Carm, rep prior representative stated, I will support it. Any further discussion? Not. I'll close and move my motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Say, all opposed say no. Motion carries. Are there further amendments to House Bill 2048? Representative Burris. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, um, I, have, an, well, I have an amendment, and uh, basically it pertains to um, page 10, line 20, and it would, um, and I'll, I'll pull it up just real quick. I, I would like to uh, respectfully propose to amend, um, so section six, the first line there, page 10, line 20, strike uh, June 1st, 2021, and replace it with January 24th, 2022, um, as basically an attempt to maintain the status quo um, longer than June 1st, obviously. That, that, that's the basic thing I, I would like to propose to do. Uh, do we, do we, does Natalie have an amendment or this is just conceptual? I do, Mr. Chair. Okay. Sorry, I was pulling it up here. So um, essentially what we would do here is um, those changes that you're making in 48925, the way they look right now um, would be extended until January 24th of 2022, which is two weeks after you start your 2022 legislative session. Okay. Representative Burris, do you want to move that amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I do wish to move my amendment. There's a second. Representative Owens. Discussion? Representative Owens. Having had a chance to, to have these conversations, I think the, the crux of this is um, the whole point of this legislation is to extend it to give us plenty of time to work out the finer details on many pieces within this legislation. Um, what this does is basically takes into account uh, the what if scenario. Uh, what if we're closed for a longer duration than, than June, June 1st? What if there's an outbreak? What if this you know lasts longer? So the idea here is um, gives us just a little bit more flexibility in the event that something uh, were to happen or we were to be closed down and we couldn't work out these finer points, it would uh, it would extend these provisions until the next legislation legislative session begins. Further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Right. Chairman, a, a question for the revisor. Uh, Representative Carmichael. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Scott, I, I had not actually seen this balloon and didn't necessarily anticipate that it was going to be offered. However, would I be correct that if the legislature is in session and if the legislature in its wisdom decided that this date in January of 22 was in fact too far away, 
that we could always propose and presumably enact additional legislation that would shorten this date uh, based upon conditions and, of course, subject to the governor's power of veto. Yes, you you certainly could. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Burke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, and I just wanted to thank um, Representative Owens for his explanation because that's that was basically you know my my reasoning for offering this amendment. Okay. I appreciate that, Representative Jennings. I think I heard your voice. Yes, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the reviser, I guess, um, in the event this amendment were to be placed in there and in the event that the emergency declaration is otherwise terminated by the governor prior to that date because conditions have improved, all of the provisions of this, except those that might be saved very specifically by language, will be uh, coming to an end anyhow, is that correct? I, I'm not sure I'm totally following um, your question. So this statute um, is essentially where you guys um, limited some of the governor's powers. So an example would be that she can't issue an order um, restricting the sale of firearms. Um, so Right now, those restrictions on her power expire on January 26th. This bill proposes to extend that out to um, June 1st. This amendment would extend that even further to January of 2022. So then maybe my question's better phrased in this way. If the emergency declaration is ceased by order of the governor, which I think she would have authority to do, then none of this would matter anymore. Is that correct? Well, so long as, so this statute does um, come into play um, during any state of disaster emergency. So as long as there is an effective state of disaster emergency going on, this statute is, um, the one that you know gives her a pow power to issue those executive orders. So mm, that's interesting. The, so if, the, if there's an armed insurrection, she can take no action with respect to firearms. Is that correct? Well, so if she were to issue a new state of disaster emergency, and forgive me, let me pull up the uh, bill language here. So say she was going to issue a new um, state of disaster emergency because of, you know, that type of situation. Subsection D in this statute currently reads, the governor shall not have the power to or authority to temporarily or permanently seize or authorize seizure of any ammunition or to suspend or limit the sale, dispensing or transportation of firearms pursuant to subsection C8 or any other executive authority. So that limitation would apply to any exec, any uh, state of disaster emergency that would be declared. Okay. And, and, then the and, last... and all of these would, I mean, yeah. So, the, so if I understand the proposed amendment, instead of ending all of these quote unquote temporary provisions in June, it would extend all of those until January, ostensibly to protect against something going wrong and us not being able to finish our work. But it does have the effect of continuing for a pretty significant time all these temporary measures. Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Chair. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate the rationale that's been given, but I would oppose the motion. I mean, taking, changing that date, the way I understand this, takes away any ration, any incentive to complete work on revising this statute during the current session, which I think is something that is critical to be done. You know, I, I think that if we get to the point where we have to suspend again, we'll find some way before June 20, whatever it is, to extend this farther if we need to. Uh, I, I, mean, I it's uh, not a good idea, and I oppose it. Representative Carmichael. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Heiberger uh, expressed my concern. Thank you. Further discussion? Representative Humphreys? Thank you. If I could ask uh, Natalie an, a clarifying question just to make sure that I understand. Natalie, this does not keep us from doing our work here that we've already said we want to do, which is do, which is revamp the chemo statutes. Is that right? This isn't prolonging that? No, it, it has no, I mean, if you pass a bill today um, and it becomes law today, you could mm -hmm. change that tomorrow as long okay. as you're here in, in, in session. So any change that we make can always be changed again. Um, okay, yeah. so my understanding is that we intend to do that, be it the date that the Senate had or the date we have or the date of this. I mean, that's what I'm understanding from the chairman or just the committee. So, okay, I just wanted to make sure that I understood. Yep, thank you. Just to confirm, yes, I mean, that is certainly my intent. The Senate in their bill um, has included March 31st at this date. We had June 1st and now the proposal to go to January 24th of 2020. Um, I don't know that I have a, a big concern, no matter what the date is, because I, I do think we need to keep the pressure on to make sure um, we come up with some permanent changes. I I certainly appreciate the concern that, you know, next week something may happen and we're not able to be in session. And so it'd be nice to have some protections in place, a back, you know, extend that a little bit, but certainly it's whatever the committee thinks. So there's no further discussion. Representative Burris, you want to close? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, really, I'm just trying to maintain the status quo that I think was implemented, well, was implemented through HB 2016, which I, which I believe, you know, a number of um, parties, you know, agreed to. And um, since firearms were brought up earlier, um, you know, I, I, just as an example, um, I certainly would want the people of my district to be able to adequately defend themselves and we don't, you know, I, I think you may have mentioned just earlier, um, it, in terms of, you know, we don't know if the session could be cut short, suspended, and we don't know, you know, what what actions the governor could or would take. So um, I certainly support um, maintaining these these protections and added checks and balances um, for all Kansans. And um, I, I move my amendment. Thank you. The motion, all in favor say aye. All opposed say no. No. I think the ayes have it. Division's been called. Okay, so we're gonna try to do this, this hybrid voting. Um, all in favor, raise your right hand. Seven in favor, all opposed, raise your hand. Two, three, four, five. So seven to five, motion carries. Further amendments? Representative Owens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we heard yesterday about uh, possibly a, um, a loophole within the healing arts um, uh, side of this legislation. Uh, it's my understanding that the Board of Healing Arts uh, proposed um, closing that loophole and have worked together last night. And so I'll let Natalie kind of explain uh, what we're trying to accomplish here with this amendment. Uh, yes, give me just a minute here. While she's looking that up, I will say it, it is my understanding that everybody uh, was satisfied and on the same page with, uh, with this minor change. Okay, so this amendment, um, there are a couple of changes here. The first one appears on page 14, um, adding a subsection B here that would provide that those practitioners that are provided a temporary emergency license under the um, authority we gave to grant those, um, if they are not a resident of Kansas, then they would not be um, required to pay the surcharge um, for this uh, healthcare stabilization fund in 403404. That was one of the things um, requested by the Board of Healing Arts. 
And then the second change is here on page 16. Um, uh, Tucker yesterday talked about subsection H here and how um, that was being interpreted by some to allow um, practitioners who are licensed in other states um, to practice here, maybe without authority types of professions that we don't necessarily have. And so this proposal would just strike subsection H. Questions for Natalie? Representative Owens, do you want to move your motion or your amendment? Yeah, so moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Representative Burris seconds. Uh, any discussion? Representative Owens, you, you're first. Sure. So as explained, um, there's concern that within H, it just says, you know, hey, if you're if you're in good standing in your state, you can come to our state, you can practice. Uh, it, it gives the implication that you don't have to touch base with anybody, that you can just come here and start working. And I don't believe that the intent of our legislation uh, was for that. I believe the intent was, hey, come here, uh, we'll emergency approve you, we'll fast track your approval, but we still need to know who's practicing in our state. And I believe that's the intent of the Board of Healing Arts um, uh, and those involved with this with this amendment is just look, make sure you go through the process once you get here. Um, we're happy to let you work here, right? We're not trying to create any impediment to anybody coming here to work. It's just we need to know who's licensed and who's operating in the state of Kansas. Further discussion? I just want to make clear that throughout the course of today, I, I do I do appreciate everyone getting together throughout the evening last night. Um, that was kind of my directive when we left last night to come up with this language, so I do appreciate that. Throughout today, there's been some discussion of whether or not we're getting involved in that CRNA slash AA discussion that's taken place in the Capitol the last couple of years and certainly don't want us to delve into that. That's not an issue for the Judiciary Committee, certainly one for a different time and a different committee to study further. Other discussion? Representative Humphreys? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm glad you said that because it just brings that clarity to me that we are not making decision about the, the AAs or the CRNAs. It's, that's not what this is about. This, I feel like this bill is so many pages, it's way too important to get bogged down with this particular uh, temporary uh, provision. And so, um, I'm going to support the amendment, but I'm not making any comment or any decision about how I feel about those two situations. So uh, that's, that's, I just thank you for that clarity, and I'm kind of reiterating that, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Further discussion? Anyone online? Seeing none, Representative Owens, you may close. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I close. For the motion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Further amendments? Seeing Representative Hoheisel. Oh, seeing none, what's the pleasure of the committee for House Bill 2048 as amended? I'm sorry. I thought I acknowledged you in advance of asking that, which, yeah, Representative Hoheisel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move that we pass out HB 2048 favorable. As amended? As amended. Is there a second? Second. Second by Representative Jennings. Any further discussion, committee? Seeing none, Representative Hoheisel, let me close. Close. For the motion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. The bill will be recommended favorably. Committee, that is all we have for today. Thanks to your good work, we will not be meeting tomorrow. We'll see you on Tuesday. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.